This girl was graceful and elegant, but she walked with a slight limp, like she had sprained her ankle. It was probably an injury she had sustained while fighting monsters. Little Marshall brother, I truly apologize, she said. You saved us and now we're troubling you. If you weren't protecting us, you would be so far ahead already. We're such a burden. We are all cultivators. It's our obligation to look after each other, Luo Binghe said, imminently proper. Shen Jingzhou had come to know Luo Binghe's early stage white lotus mindset like the back of his hand, and he didn't find this strange. Oh, his student was fighting monsters while also looking after this crowd of weaker fighters, women and young disciples. Hence, he hadn't shot up in the rankings. Otherwise, with his ability, he would have already effortlessly defeated Gong Yixiao. Even Ming Fan ranked higher than Luo Binghe right now. But it didn't matter. Luo Binghe would have a second wind. My disciple is the most awesome in the world. If he weren't so good, so kind, and so easy to take advantage of, none of you could even dream of defeating him, Shen Jingzhou thought. But the guy had never thought to reflect on what this agitated attitude of his actually meant. Yue Qingyuan smiled. Qingqiu, that little disciple of yours has great moral character. Shen Qingqiu smiled behind his open fan, quietly accepting the compliment. Qi Qingqi humped. <laughs> exactly. It's impossible to tell that he was the one who taught the boy. Other observers said a few additional words of praise. However, they weren't necessarily sincere. What use was good moral character? The Immortal Alliance Conference valued power. In their eyes, Luo Binghe's actions seemed rather childish. But when Huang Hua Palace's old master, sitting by Shen Qingqiu's side, saw Luo Binghe's face through the crystal mirror, he let out a barely audible, huh? And almost stood up. Shen Qingqiu didn't glance over, but he understood well enough. Luo Binghe was beautiful, and he looked quite like his birth mother. The old palace master had seen this face and, thinking the junior disciple's similar appearance only coincidental, had become nostalgic about his own favourite. He could scarcely have imagined that Luo Binghe was a child of precisely that beloved lost pupil. On the other hand, in Jue Di Gorge, Luo Binghe was calmly considering what to do with this crowd of vulnerable disciples. From a moral standpoint, he couldn't just abandon them. They were from Huanhua Palace and had barely started training. But he also didn't want to miss the chance to shine in the Immortal Alliance Conference and win honour for Shi Zun. As Luo Binghe was mulling over how to extricate himself from the situation, Shen Qingzhou thought he was rolling around with maidens and making sparks fly. <gasps> that was the first maiden to sleep with Luo Binghe! Qing Wanyue, the graceful and subdued Qing Wanyue. Shen Qingzhou's impression of this sister wasn't half bad, though she wasn't much help to the protagonist's undertaking of killing and dominating the three realms. She was a warm and gentle person who didn't like infighting in the harem. What man wouldn't like such a girl? I'd rather read 10,000 words describing ghost head spider's mate than read about Sha Hualing tearing into Qing Wanyue. No thank you! Watching this parade of people trailing close behind Luo Binghe, treating him like their personal saviour, Shen Qingzhou grew unhappy. Some of these disciples honestly hadn't acclimated and so couldn't yet demonstrate their skills. They would be fine after a little more time to adjust. But some were truly ignorant and incompetent, yet they refused to back out of the competition. They wanted to ride on Luo Binghe's coattails so they could fumble together some beads and rise in the ranking. If this were the black-hearted Luo Binghe, he'd have slaughtered them all in seconds without even blinking. People sure do take advantage of kindness, huh? They pressed forward for a while, and every low-level monster that had leapt from the darkness to attack them was eliminated with pretty much only flicks of Luo Binghe's fingers. His sword never left its sheath, yet he still couldn't pick up the pace. Why, you ask? A female disciple from Huanghua Palace leaned on Qing Wanyue and began to hiccup and cry. Sister, my feet hurt so much. In front, Luo Binghe stopped, but he didn't turn around. He lowered his head 
and rubbed his temples. Nervous, Qin Wan Yue lowered her head and spoke quietly to the girl. Wang Rong, endure a bit longer, all right? We have to walk a little faster. But my feet really hurt. I can't walk anymore. We've been walking all day. There's nowhere to take a bath. I'm so uncomfortable. A number of untrained disciples in the group agreed, one after another. If Shen Qingqiu had been the one in charge, he would have long since revoked their right to participate and kicked them out of Jue Di Gorge. If your feet are so delicate, don't sign up for the Immortal Alliance Conference. And if you do, then whatever, but why drag others down? Look at Liu Mingyan, the difference between you is just that vast. No wonder she's a number one female protagonist. But there was nothing he could do about Qin Wan Rong. After all, the beautiful sisters, Qin Wan Yue and Qin Wan Rong, were members of Luo Binghe's harem. Therefore, according to Universal Convention, no matter how delicately they dug their own graves, they wouldn't die. Shen Qingqiu's heart filled with a strange annoyance. Luo Binghe, you... In the future, when you're gathering your home, can you put more thought into quality? Don't just welcome any decent-looking girl into your arms. Their inconsistency and home standards make this master's heart hurt for you. Qing Wan Yue sent another look at Luo Binghe's back. Little sister, she said quietly, we've already made a lot of trouble for Luo Marshal brother. She still wanted to rely on Luo Binghe and try to make a name for herself in the Immortal Alliance Conference and earn some reputation. If her sister foolishly annoyed Luo Binghe, it would go badly for her. Luo oh, Marshal brother is such a good person, he won't mind. Qing Wan Rong said innocently. Isn't that right, Luo Marshal brother? Luo Binghe finally turned, a faint smile still on his face. Peerlessly handsome, utterly faultless, and did not speak. But for some reason, Qing Wan Yue inwardly shivered in fear. However, Qing Wan Rong had cotton for brains and took his smile as acquiescence. Singing a carefree tune, she swept over to a nearby creek like a gust of wind. It's coming! Shen Jingzhou gazed tensed. Luo Binghe started, given what she'd just said. He thought she was going to bathe. Fortunately, this little girl wasn't that eccentric. She only shook off her shoes and socks to dip her feet into the creek. Those were the river's upper reaches. What if someone downstream wanted to drink? Shen Jingzhou mentally lit a candle for any such unlucky disciples. A number of the other disciples soon followed Qing Wan Rong's example, and just like that, the little crowd started to laugh and play. Luo Binghe was completely helpless as he watched. It would have been awkward to approach them, so he could only call from far away. Wading in water at night isn't safe. It's best if we finish and leave right now, he said. Shen Qingqiu felt this was a bit odd. In the original novel, surely Luo Binghe hadn't stood so far away. He didn't think he'd remembered wrong. At this time, Luo Binghe, out of worry or, out of great master airplane shooting towards the sky, selfish desire to write fan service, went to the creek with the others. Then he enjoyed the alluring show of all the women slowly rolling down their stockings. Textbook foot fetish material. Luo Binghe pleaded with the disciples, but a few had even crossed to the other side of the creek, chatting and laughing. It's all right, Luo Marshal brother, you can come too. Even the sect leaders watched through the crystal mirrors were speechless. Shen Qingqiu had no expression on his face. Luo Binghe, you still won't go? If you don't, you'll miss the plot. Qing Wan Yue knew her little sister was being rather inappropriate, and she cautiously apologized to Luo Binghe. Luo Marshal brother, I'm so sorry, she said. This is the first time sister and the others are participating in the Mortal Lions Conference. Truly lovable and pitiful, she bit her lip like she was making an excruciating decision. If Lord Marshall Brother feels burdened, leave us and go. It's all right. 
These words, together with that expression on the verge of tears, were widely insincere. But after hearing her plea, any man with bare minimum of virtue would find himself unable to do as she suggested. Before Luo Binghe could reply, an ear-piercing scream came from the creek. His face suddenly changed, and he shoved past Qin Wan Yue, whose beautiful face had lost all colour, as he dashed towards the creek's bank. The audience watching from the crystal mirror stood in terror. What's going on? Luo Binghe asked in a forceful voice, his sword before him. Five or six disciples had been washing their feet and playing in the creek, now two of them had disappeared, and one of the missing was Qing Wan Rong. You see, told you that you should have gone earlier. Wonderful, a perfectly good wife is now gone, just like that, Shen Jinchou thought, frustrated and disappointed. Aw, now you can't complete the Qing sister's bouquet for the grand threesome scene in the future. Now what? Moreover, despite everything, he never thought that a member of the protagonist's harem could actually get herself killed. I don't know what happened, a disciple screamed. The water suddenly turned black, and Sect Sister and the others were suddenly swept under something. Lobinka rapidly dragged the stupefied disciples still in the creek up on the bank. Just as he's reached out to grab the last person, they fell over like they had lost their footing. Everyone stared at the water closed over the disciples' head and they disappeared with their eyes wide open. At the same time, a black smog billowed through the creek. Shen Qingchou peered through the crystal mirror. The smog was actually countless black strands, smooth and silky like a woman's dark hair. From between the strands seeped scarlet blood, diluted by creek water. They were thicker and more disgusting than Sadako's hair. Someone on the dais cried out in shock. It's a resentment demon! In Jue Di Gorge, Luo Binghe had quickly identified the monster in the creek as well. He sent sword glares into the water as he cried, Get far away from the water! It's a demon realm's female resentment demon! For a while, the billows and billows of hair-like demonic's creature's body swirled within the water. Suddenly, like they were burping after a full meal, the black strands spat out a few objects with streams of bubbles. Three bodies that had been sucked clean of flesh and blood, leaving only drenched corpse and skin and bone. The pores on the dead bodies were abnormally large. That was because many strands of hair were still attached to their skin, thrusted into their pores, hungrily sucking out the body's remaining flesh, blood, and spiritual essence. Leaving no pore uninvaded, diving into any opening it could find, this was one of the female resentment demon's most terrifying characteristics. This scene scared the disciples by the creek witless. Wails and screams filled the forest as they threw themselves behind Luo Binghe to hide. At the sight of the horrible state of her sister's body, Qing Wan Yue almost fainted. Luckily, she was smart enough to not faint for real. Otherwise, in all this chaos, who would bother to help her escape?